an artificial entity called the corporation that has no allegiance to communities or to countries or to the world or to the people has the same constitutional rights that real human beings. And as you know, that was done by a rogue Supreme Court decision in 1886 and then followed with other Supreme Court decisions. Corporations should constitutionally be prohibited, and there's no word corporation in our Constitution, constitutionally prohibited from engaging in politics, from engaging in elections, and from lobbying as an entity. Prohibited, period. It's interesting that Actual Business Week came out with an editorial in 2000 saying Cor corporations should get out of politics. Now that's something people really resonate to because you should say the only people who should have constitutional rights are people. Yeah. Yes. I look forward to the uh, Peace and Freedom platform elaborating that a little bit more. By the way, I just came from Utah where I uh, was required by Utah law to physically be there in order to get on the ballot physically be there. Now, I don't see Obama or McCain having to be physically yeah. there. Right. Right. I have to swear, uh, you know, the requisite words. And here's what I swore to. I, Ralph Nader, declare my intention of becoming an unaffiliated candidate for the political group designated as Peace and Freedom for the Office of President of the United States. your colleagues to get, your associates to get on the ballot in, uh, in Iowa. Uh, and uh, our, our best ballot access guru, he's really an incredible person, uh, Richardson, Michael Richardson, uh, has pledged that he would provide lots of pro bono time to help you get on the ballot and overcome these incredible obstacles that the two-party <coughs> dictatorship has imposed on dissent and, and diversity and choice on the ballot for the American people. We should always remember, dissent is the mother of almost all assent. Test it. Test everybody. And so, how do you cut the ground out from corporations uh, in ways that people uh, resonate with their daily rhythms, with their daily values? And I want to just give you a quick list. When you have single-payer health insurance, you eliminate the health insurance company, period. The majority of the American people support full Medicare, government insurance for all, and a new poll in April says that 59% of the physicians support single-payer. So that's the end of the health insurance company in, in that area. When you democratize credit and you go down to the neighborhoods and you have development, development, developmental credit unions that are really controlled by the people there who are the cooperatives, uh, you undermine uh, and weaken the financial giants that are now destabilizing with their corruption and their race to Washington for a, a bailout uh, our entire economy. When you decentralize energy and you have local social solar energy and energy efficiency producing huge amounts of jobs in the local community, you drain away the power of the coal and, and oil and gas companies. When you have decentralized agriculture, you replace the agribusiness giants. Huge support for small farmers, yes. farm, to, farm to consumer market, etc. When you when you uh, engage in this kind of displacement, uh, you are really not having to go into all kinds of frameworks that people are, are not understanding, have been propagandized against. But what does it do? It shifts power from the few to the many in the daily control of people's lives over their own lives. That's the key. And, 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 and so, the two words I'd like you to discuss in the future, dealing with corporate power, is displacement and subordination. Subordination to the sovereignty of the people by stripping them of their constitutional rights as human beings have them, and displacement. All of that provides huge opportunity for millions of people 
to do the little things every day that build the edifice of justice and true freedom and fulfillment of human possibilities. Thank you.